is showtime. It's peanuts. Actually, it's peanut time. It's not showtime, I guess. Oh, Hello. that's all right. Check you out. We were just counting. This is our sixth Pino time. Well, it's our sixth Pino time on Facebook and YouTube because to be fair, I've been with the company for seven years. So I've been doing seven years of Pino time. Ben, I don't even want to know how much Pino time you've been doing. I think, I think you have me beat without a doubt. Um, well, it looks like it's not enough yet though. No, it's never it's never enough. Um, I will tell you, it looks like we have an aquatic theme. Ben Ben moved himself over, so now we've got our fish that are swimming upstream, upstream, and there's a turtle the over in the pool. Yeah, the turtle will be the turtle is food for your fish, which will be food, food for, for your fish. <laughs> hey, circle of life keeps coming around. Um, circle of life, nectar of life. Let's talk about some wine here. Um, oh, Bob's asking where the fish is. Bob, look right above our heads. There it is. Um, anyway, so oh, everyone's loving the fish pictures. I think we're done here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we are taking a road trip today. We are getting outside of the Rush River Valley. I don't know about where everybody else is, but Sonoma County is starting to open up some parks, some beaches, uh, some areas this weekend. So we're getting the heck out and we're going to Sonoma Coast. Thank you, Ben. We're going to Campbell Ranch and Campbell Ranch is over in the coast. Um, it is a long, windy road. So one easier way to go is via airplane, which is a little puddle jumper thingy, like the Flintstones. So you got to move your feet real fast. Um, but knowing Ben as I do, Ben, you've been packed since what, January for this trip? Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, it's pretty easy for us. Uh, it's very difficult to drive out there. <clears throat> it takes about three or so hours to go out to the coast of our location. It's back roads. And uh, we're lucky, less than uh, two miles from us is the Healdsburg Airport. And so our grower, Steve Campbell, has an airplane. And so uh, it's much easier to have Steve come and pick us up at the airport because it takes about five minutes to fly out to his, to his uh, location from the airport, which is really neat. In fact, we've taken, uh, Steve gave us a little side tour over the Buddhist temple that's out at the coast. And I, I had heard about it, but I had never seen it. And when we flew over, it's unbelievable. It's this huge pyramid in the middle of a lake. And it's all- well, that's awesome. Yeah, it really is awesome. It's unbelievable. I didn't know that, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, Can so you visit it? There, it's the Buddhist temple. Can you visit it at all or no? It's be a Buddhist? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I know a few Buddhists that you might ask, you know, we'll, let's see if we can do a tour out there. We can bring the wine. I but it's, drink wine. it's a beautiful location. And so we're flying out to to the Campbell Ranch. Campbell kind of was an interesting situation. Um, can, uh, I, I think it was my assistant winemaker, Dave, had found that uh, that vineyard and uh, asked if we wanted to be part of that. So uh, I think it was, I'm not sure, 2009, I think we, we first started making uh uh, the Campbell Ranch. I, I don't even remember anymore, but uh, it's an interesting location. It's very close to the coast. You go right out to the true coast. It's just several miles from the ocean, and it's on a high ridge about 700, 800 feet above the ocean, so we get a lot of marine influence out there, and it's it's funny. We, we grow um, the two clones that are most, that do the best in cooler cooler areas. So we grow the um, 115 and no, I mean the 667 and the 777 clone, which do much better in, okay. in cooler climate. So uh, so we're able to get that. And it's also on this beautiful uh, uh, Gold Ridge soil, which we normally find further south in the uh, in the Russian River, like in the Sebastopol area. Well, the Peters, the Peters Vineyard that we pull grapes from is the Gold Ridge soil. I think yeah. you mentioned this a few weekends ago. And so this, I had just learned, this was on Gold Ridge soil as well, but they're such different pinots, even yeah. though it's the same yeah. soil. But they, they all, they both have the marine influences. It's interesting. It's just, it's the location, the microclimate that really makes the difference there. And uh, we're going to talk also about the Charles a little later, which is, has that same marine influence. The ocean, we're very lucky that we're that close to the ocean because the mechanics of the 
marine influences is when it's warmer inland in the valley, it draws the, fo the fog in. So uh, we have these very warm temperatures in the daytime, and then they cool off. As it gets warmer in the valley, the fog comes in and cools our grapes off. So we get a break there. Longer hang time. And our coast is not known to be an extremely warm coast. I'm originally from Florida. And when I was in Florida, you go to the beach because it gets warmer at the beach. You get to cool off at the beach. You can go in the ocean at the beach. When I moved to California and it got warm here in the valley. I any of that here. <laughs> no, I went to the yeah. coast and it gets so much colder. And hence the reason we always say to wear layers um, here, which is hilarious. Uh, hilarious, Jonathan, my hair looks lighter. I did just wash it, so it's a little cleaner. Just thought I would address that really quick. <laughs> um, how many different Pinots does the winery produce? We actually make 10 different Pinots. These are the only two that we're tasting today that are outside of the Russian River Valley. Although, Campbell is still considered in Sonoma. Right? Yes, Sonoma Coast. Sonoma Coast, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Sonoma Coast, and it's in Annapolis, and it's in it. It's what's considered the true coast because it's it's on the coast. And what we're trying, what's been happening in California is there, in our area, they're trying to divide the uh, the area up a little bit because some part of the southern uh, Sonoma Coast goes through Sebastopol and out over 101 south to uh, San Pablo Bay and along Petaluma that's called the Petaluma Gap. And it's quite different. Jesus, you're going out to the Canaros region of, of uh, Sonoma. So what what's being attempted now is to make a specific coastal uh, ADA called True Coast or um, Wow, West of West. It's the... Further, you can't go any further. I like the wow idea. Um, we do also, I just was reminded with uh, Jonathan's comment with the vertical. We do actually offer a vertical of Campbell Ranch on the website. Mm -hmm. I think it's the only vertical that uh, we mm -hmm. offer as a, a one item purchase. And that is the 13, the 14, the 15, and the 16. You can actually also do the 17 because we've got the 17 available too. And that's in our glass. Um, this is delicious. It's a little darker. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's really more the complexity from the start and the nose veers to like fresh plum and bramble. I get this like uh, blackberry and fine-tuned hibiscus and red fruits as the wine opens up. And it's been in my glass now waiting for this show for an hour. And so it's got a lot of – it's opened up beautifully. And, uh, you know, it really does have some uh, – as it breathes some of the coastal uh, influence, it does have a little bit of saltiness to it, you know, and um, some fresh forest. Salinity. Yeah. I was just corrected again. Salinity. Or you were corrected. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <some> salt <laughs> in this puppy. Man. I got I got a peanut gallery over here as well. Oh, hey, Melania is is sipping Pinot and Napa. I love it. Good job. I'm sipping it in Sonoma. We got Cleveland too. Ha! Ah, Marjorie says she can't pour her glass an hour ahead. I'll drink it. I'm with you, sister. Uh, my wine that I pour an hour ago is already in my belly. I'm, I'm on to the report. <laughs> well, it, it's five o'clock somewhere, so we've started early anyway, right? That's, that's well, we're working. Right? Mm -hmm. We're working hard over here. Oh, Jerry's on. I'm loving it. Do you typically decant a Pinot? Huh. That's a good question. Sure. I would think if you decanted any of our Pinots, this or the Pomard might be one to decant because this is a little bit bigger. Um, but I don't think you need to decant Pinots because, look, I'm a swirler. I like to swirl. So a lot of the decanting, though, was for – um, two reasons. One for really old wine, so it had thrown sediment. So you want to capture that before before it gets in your glass. And and for very young uh, wines like Bordeaux, I mean, they need lots of air because they're very very tight. The way uh, really big acidity and and so they they really need to aerate. So they've got all these different tools to aerate your wine to 
but decanting works with them. I, I don't really feel that you need to decant uh, Pinots, especially, you know, they, you really shouldn't wait 12 years or 15 years to drink them when they start throwing sediment. You should really appreciate them yeah. five to seven years because the beauty of Pinot is it's bright fruit. And just love the fruit in Pinot. That's what drew, drew me to Pinot in the first place. Well, and to be fair, decanters are really a pain to wash. I hate, yeah. I hate washing them. So I will gladly just do this. Yeah, Lisa's telling me that she's in with the swirl and it becomes a habit. Lisa, I swirl my coffee. I swirl my orange juice. It's don't, swirl your, don't swirl your sparkling wine, though. That's a no-no. No, but you know, when we did our Riedel seminar and we were doing the water out of the glass, I was swirling my water. Ridiculous. It's a, it's muscle memory. I can't help it. It's a good habit though, you know? Just use your glass to decant. That's easy enough. And uh, I was reminded, by the way, when we're sipping, we're sheltering in place, 11 a.m. is the new five o'clock. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, good. Kimberly's agreeing with me on washing decanters. I hear you, sister. I also don't wash wine glasses after 10 p.m. I've learned that the hard way too. Throw all my tips. Good ones. <laughs> I try. All right. So talk to me about your one of your airplane rides when you went to uh, visit Steve Campbell up in Annapolis, and you had a couple little um, scaredy cats with you. Well, it was fun because we went with, uh, with a couple of our – well, I went with Dave, uh, my assistant winemaker, and uh, Anthony Filiberte. I think he was at uh, Hirsch at the time to go out and look at that property. So um, we all flew out in Steve's dad's airplane. Steve's dad was a uh, World War II bomber pilot and he had this beautiful twin engine plane, which they don't have anymore. Uh, Steve's he was not a bomber. No, no. It's clarifying. So the, uh, the Campbell Ranch was, uh, as was uh, Charles, a sawmill. So a lumber sawmill because that whole area was all forest and they, so both of those places started out as uh, sawmills. Uh, the Campbell Ranch has a, um, what do they call it? A airline where you, where oh, you air, air strip. A landing strip, right? Well, and you, yeah, see it, too. <laughs> you see it when you're coming in and it looks like, you know, this fit. So you're flying in. What you don't realize is you better stop. Fence, you have a cliff. So, man, I was holding my breath. But as we were flying out there, we did a little tour around the Golden uh, uh, Pyramid, and I, I was looking back to see how my my two compadres were. That both of them were having so much fun. They were like this, <laughs> they were like right water, and there was nothing. They just sat there, kind of. Mm. <laughs> Now he's having a great time. Dave doesn't talk much anyway, so I'm not surprised on that one. Yeah. It was a lot quieter, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing they probably weren't as anxious to get back either. That is funny. I've been in those little. Um, uh, well, they don't mind driving out there anymore. I mean, I. Oh, look at that. <laughs> don't the, worry, Ben. We'll drive. <laughs> the funny thing is, Steve has to drive his rig, his his big truck, with all the fruit. To deliver that distance, and it's a it's a very difficult ride, and some parts of that road has collapsed into a one lane road. So, oh um, right, so great because he has to. How many trips does it take for him to bring us the grapes? Does he bring them all at one time? No, he, he brings the uh, different uh, clones. Yeah, the different uh, blocks to us at different times, and okay. so he has other he has other customers besides us also. Right. And uh, so he has to make that run quite often. He does. He probably knows it. Well, one thing I liked about when I was chatting with Steve, Steve is very shy and quiet. Um, and by the way, all of our single vineyards are named after the growers. Yeah. So Campbell Ranch is Steve Campbell. Charles is Bill Charles. Um, but when I was chatting with Steve, I got a kick out of the fact that they rent sheep every year to go in and eat all the stuff in between the uh, the vines. And that's how they landscape, which I thought was, I think it's cool. I love seeing sheep out there. Um, that's a benefit of living in Sonoma County and living in the country. Well, one of the other things is you can't find any labor out there. I mean, that's- oh, the, <laughs> You the, don't have to pay cheap as much. We've had a lot of trouble holding uh, uh, our 
workers out there. I think we also lost Ulysses was yes. the day he was picking our fruit. He had a heart attack, which was that's right, really devastating. So and very sad. Uh, yeah, no, that is right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's been a struggle to to get the fruit out there because it's pretty much off the grid when you get out there as well. Yikes. <laughs> Just nothing out there but Buddhists and grapes. I mean, come on. Actually, yeah. doesn't sound too so, bad to me. All right, well, let's get out of the airplane now. Let's get back in the car. Yeah. Well, so, let's head over to uh, Charles Vineyard, which is over in Booteville. And uh, Booteville has its own language, for those who don't know yet. There's his uh, 2017. Yeah, by the way, that is correct. We're on the 2017s. We're drinking those. Um, 16 Charles came and went quickly because we saved our 16 Charles, and we sent that along with all our wine club members and the 18. So they kind of got some little siblings there. And for those of you in the club, you are you will receive the 16 Campbell Ranch in the fall with the, um, I'm still drinking the 617. Um, the 16 Campbell Ranch will go in the fall with the 18 Campbell. So I love side-by-siding glasses. I think that's why you have two hands. So I get a big kick out of making sure you get two vintages of the same wine, obviously different vintages. Uh, super fun to side-by-side -side them and just kind of see what our wine does as they age. Unfortunately, there's no word in boot link for aging that I'm aware of. Um, I do have some words that I'll tell you in a little bit. that word out on purpose. I, yeah, my, my producer didn't uh, write down that word for me. I've got a bunch of other stuff that I can't mention here. But um, Anderson Valley, so Bill, Char Bill and Nancy Charles, we purchased our grapes for them for the um, the Charles Vineyard. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! Uh -huh. I'm going to get rid of my Campbell. I'll pop up to Charles, 2017. Yeah. And this is an Anderson Valley. Ben, where is Anderson Valley? Anderson Valley is north of north of us in Mendocino. It's the it's the highway that goes from what is it uh, Cloverdale Cloverdale to the to Mendocino, the town of Mendocino, and drives right through the the valley of uh, Anderson Valley, and uh, Boonville is a very small little town. If you're small, you don't blink your eye from the stop sign to the as you pass. <laughs> I was out there before all the the crap hit the fan, and I was like, "Oh, here's Boonville. Oh, there went Boonville. It was." Yeah, no, it's, and, it. and the Charles Vineyard is like one one stop sign short of the town of Boonville, so it's right almost in Boonville. And as you drive by, there's some pastel colored uh, bungalows. That's part of the property that's uh, the oh. and that also again was a uh, was a sawmill, and uh, I think the the Charles family has been there since 1950, and I think they started planting grapes there in 1999. I think so. We were pretty we were oh. pretty much in the early end of it. Uh, You're on the same path. What's that? We're on the same path. 99. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We, while, but. but we didn't meet them until uh, 2006. Oh. Or, I think 2006 may have been. Bruce and I were out driving around. Our next door neighbor at where the winery is is a uh, sells grape cuttings to vineyards, and we always ask Chris, "Well, what do you know out there? Any, any anybody growing any grapes that aren't spoken for?" You know, it, it's been. During that period of time we were looking, it was very difficult to find grapes again because uh, there was a big push to make Pinot. So we were out looking around for another location outside of the area that we worked in, which was the Russian River Valley. So Chris told us about uh, the Charles family, so we drove up there and walked around. And he had a couple of he had a couple of blocks that he was willing to to sell to us. So. Bruce and I huddled for a while and said, we went up there to find one block. <laughs> and we huddled. We said, let's take it all. So we took all the lots that he had available. And so, what, what clones are they? They're, uh, let's see, what do we have there? We have um, 114, 115, 777, and Pomard. So he's got, he does okay. four clones there. So uh, a couple of the uh, the ones that, that do well in the cooler area. But then again, it gets really warm there. And 
it, it could be a 50 degree difference between night and between uh, morning and, and late afternoon. So I was going to ask that what the degree difference. Well, and especially compared to Campbell Campbell Ranch, right? Right. The difference um, in the temperature is. This is warmer there because once you get into the valley, you do, it's warmer right. in the valley. So we right. expect to get our fruit from um, from Anderson Valley before we get the um, the coastal. Fruit. But you know, in in a few of the years that we've been, uh, well, we've had some strange weather. Uh, everything's ripe at the same time, so you know we we spread it out. The idea, I mean, it was a good idea. We had we had our vineyards in the Russian River, and they were pretty much ripening at the same time. So instead of looking for more vineyards in that area, we expanded to move out to yeah. much cooler area, and of course. Uh, Within the same three week period, the last couple of years, everything came in at the same time. It didn't matter where it was grown. Warm, warm. <laughs> Mother Nature got you. Which, um, well, I have quite a couple questions. Is is there a Pinot Festival in Boonville? I believe they have, yeah. Anderson Valley. I think, the, I think Bill's daughter is one of the people in charge of that. I think. Roger, it's a small, it is a small town too. Jeff yes. is drinking the Charles. Jeff, I'm curious what vintage Charles you're drinking. You're going to have to, if you're still on, respond back, let me know. Uh, he said in Houston, it's been five o'clock for a while. Hey, Jeff, here it's been five o'clock for a while too, and it's not even five o'clock. Um, if that tells you anything, uh, it is Thursday. Um, which, we're drinking. I don't know. Well, we're drinking 17. No, Jeff, 17. Jeff said he's drinking the Charles. Uh, they're in Houston, so I'm just curious because I'm nosy by nature. Which right. vintage of Charles he's drinking? I'm always curious. Um, and then, oh, 2017. Nice. Cheers, Jeff. He's he's drinking with us. I love yeah. it. He's 2017 too. Well played. Um, let's see where. Oh, so you're talking about the grapes coming in. Is there one vineyard that consistently always comes in first for Pinot? Yeah, there is. It, it's usually Booker is our very first one. It's in the, it's in the, uh, the warmest part of the Russian River on uh, West Side Road. Okay. It's the the central throw of the Russian River is a, it's what it's called, and it's pretty much the warmer, warmest area in that Russian River area. And uh, I think that the vineyard is like just a few feet away from William Sullyan. And oh. that's out there also, I think. And that's where Bruce and Renee's house was on the on the north side of uh, the Booker property. So we always looked up and there was the vineyards that we now are working yeah. with. Yeah. So and, and it's amazing because uh, the Booker Ranch is uh, he's also an organic uh, milk producer. So, oh. yeah, so that he's a big milk farm. You know, okay. Like, Wine for kids, wine for adults. I love it. Well, talk to me about the Charles. I've been drinking it. What's that? He's got that liquid thing covered the <laughs> adulthood. I will tell you, I went to a winery eons ago that did a kid tasting, and they did a vanilla milk, a chocolate milk, and a strawberry milk, and they put it all in the wine glasses for the kids. So you as the adult could do your wine tasting. Your kid was happy. I have kids. I prefer not to wine taste with my kids, but... You know, sometimes you can't get a sitter and you do what you have to do. Um, anyways, talk to me about this Charles. Um, wait, the Charles grows. Do you get, wait. Oh, the clones at Charles Grove. Do we get all four of their clones? Yes. We do. Yeah. But his pomard does not go in our pomard. No. Our pomard is all uh, Russian. Seven, seven. Neither one of those go in there. Uh, we try to keep everything by ABA. So that would be. Uh, Mendocino Anderson Valley, so it wouldn't go into Russian River. Uh, so this is a blend of the one 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 fourteen, one one four one one five, and seven 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 and Pomard. Those yeah. are great names, by the way. Amazing names of clones. Leave it to the French. I mean, it's like these Dijon clones, right? With the you know sexy French names. Oh, amazing, the, yeah. The they're French. Great. <laughs> Maybe it sounds better in French. I don't speak French, but um, yeah, they outdid themselves. So how do, since, you know, we've done a couple of these now with just the Pomard straight and just the triple seven, what do the different clones bring to this blend? 
Well, and then, you know, because when we pick these also, they come in at separate times. So even from Bill, which is a long, long ride down to our winery. It is. It's beautiful, but it's long. Yeah, it's a it's windy. I mean, if it was a direct right, it wouldn't be so bad, but it's the worst windy road you can, you know, so two times a day out of that, you're you're done. But uh, we we get every we get each clone delivered separately, so we process them separately. Uh, with this one, it doesn't really make that much difference because it's going to all be one unit anyway. Because you know, because we only make the Anderson Valley the one vineyard. So, but we keep them separate because it's kind of fun. Some part of that um, we like to know which the different parts are. So sometimes not all of it fits in, and then we have a little bulk wine or some wine to play with for ourselves. So. Well, um, and I don't know if, if people are aware if they've caught on yet, but obviously we are a pepino producer and everyone's learning slowly about all these clones. And so when our wines come in, you know, we know who's driving the truck. So we know which vineyard it is and which clone. Everything is sorted separate, sorted individually, right? By the bin. Yes. And then it's fermented in the bin and barreled. And so in the very beginning of our production, uh, this... Charles 114 clone is 100% separate from its siblings, for lack of a better word. And then a few months in, when Ben and his team sit down and do their blending and their pouring, they blend the families together, the siblings make these single vineyards. And so if you come visit us during harvest, if you're allowed, um, it's fascinating because we are such a small winery that if you come in our back area, we just have wall to wall to wall to wall these big plastic bins with cheesecloths over them. And I joke, my office is in the very back. And I joke and say, you guys need to put cheese in the front so I can figure out my walk of the maze. And every harvest then measures how far the door to my office opens because it opens out to where, how far he can put a bin. Because there might be this much room between the bin and the open door. We're gonna have to test it because you spend a lot of time at home and you may have ate more this so i have to measure to make sure that i leave you he enough. weighs me he measures me and then he measures the door it's it's very it's a very different work environment and then he puts cheese at the end so it doesn't help at all it's funny because the the way we have to set everything up we can't lock something in the back so always we're always thinking like three steps ahead of time and it, it's hard to explain but if you came and watched this how we lay out the whole floor because we have limited space. So my whole idea is to make sure that as we're setting things up, we'll be able to get them out. Other, the newer wine has to go in the back. So it's always a, it's a, it's a three dimensional chess game that we play for the whole harvest. They know what they're doing. I, I don't, and it's all written on this like gray duct tape on these whitish plastic bins, the vintage and what it is. and. As I like to say, there's a method to my madness, Ben. There's a method to your guys' madness. But it is fascinating. It is super cool. And the smell is amazing. And it is really neat. Jeff's getting tired of delaying his flights to Sonoma, June 11th. I don't know if we'll be open, but. We're waiting on county and state. No way to know. Waiting on county and state authorities to give us the yay, Let's yay, see. go ahead, oh, whatnot. This is uh this is killing us as much as you guys. And by the way, we are so thankful. People are joining in. People are watching this later at their their schedule. People are are part of this. And speaking of which, not to relay really quick, but we have been donating two dollars or so a bottle uh, for everything we have been selling online and whatnot. And we just wrote a check for over six thousand dollars to the local food bank. So. Very makes us feel really part of the team here. So it's really um, incredible. Well, and thank you to everybody out there because you, a you guys are supporting us. B you're feeding everybody uh, around, which is always a win win. Yeah, this is well, this is my salad today, my fruit salad. Um, but no, thank you for your support because we are able to do this because of you guys, and you're also supporting us, which absolutely we are thankful for too. And the benefit is you get some freaking awesome Pinot in your glass. Yeah. And so hopefully one of these days we'll open up again and you can come and watch our madness. And if you do, we're, I think, 
I think we're one of the few wineries that operate the way we do. We don't tank anything. Everything is made in small bins. We track every single clone and every single bin. And we every day, three times a day, somebody's got their nose in each one of those bins. We know if there's a problem right away. So that's what it takes to make really high quality Pinot Noir. You have to be on top of it. Yeah, and let me be clear. Ben, ben is right. We track it on a yellow legal pad that Ben writes everything down on, right? Literally, he writes everything down. He gives it to his guys to put in the computer, but we are still old schoolish. Cool thing, too, you come to the winery. There aren't a ton of people that work there. I am there. Ben is usually, oh, Ben, where are you? Ben is usually there. Um, you know, and we, no, no, oh, crap, there. Backwards. Of I'm bad at that. Oh, fish are there. Um, but uh, no, we are there. We are the people. We would love to see you guys when you do come to visit. It's awesome. Um, I am going to wrap it up for now. We're at our little 30 minute mark. We don't want to take too much of anybody's time. But I'm have a glass of wine here while I'm at it. Well, I've been drinking the whole time. I've been enjoying the whole time because uh, that's what we do. But I will tell you, we have talked Ben's wife, Yolanda, <laughs> into joining. <laughs> <laughs> ben laughs into joining us on Tuesday. So she's going to be our special guest. So if you have any questions that you didn't want to ask Ben, but you want to ask Yolanda, bring them. Let us know. Ask her about the seminar she gave on the riverboat uh, from Prague to Budapest. Well, I don't even know the story. Oh, I, oh, do I know the story? I might know the story. Yeah, we can ask Yolanda all kinds of questions and um, we can, we can call out Ben because who knows if he's telling the truth? I, I don't know. Um, now, join us Tuesday, 4 o'clock, same time, same place. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for your support. We absolutely love you guys. Love this. Ben, cheers. I think I've learned this. Cheers, cheers. Yeah. Enjoy cheers. some seafood for dinner. And, uh, hey, everybody, thank you so much. See you guys Tuesday. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>